Hi, this is Amy, and today I want to talk to you about using Google Chrome in your school district and why having Chrome with the Chrome Web Store open is so important for your students. So I went to a school district, not my own, uh, last week and I worked with some students and I found that when we tried to go into the Chrome Web Store and install Google Drive apps, we weren't able to do that because it was it was not turned on in their Google Apps for Education domain. Had to have all the kids sign out and sign into their Gmail accounts, which they all did without much problem. But it left me wondering why would any school district not take advantage of these tools and, and what there, there is to offer here. So I thought what I might do is just kind of show you around Chrome and show you how this browser has really evolved as an operating system, why it's different from other browsers, and what you can do with it educationally. I know already I'm going to leave a hundred things out. So if you would, please go to the blog posting that will appear at www.friedtechnology.com and please comment there and let me know what I left out. I'll make this video again and make it better with your comments. So first of all, I'm logged into my Google Apps for Education account. And so um, I've got access to all my stuff up here through the black bar. In the school district I was working with, they had this too. And the students were able to click on Drive, and they were able to create Google Docs. But what they didn't know they were missing is all the other things that you can now create through your Google Drive or edit through your Google Drive. So let me show you how you get these Google Drive apps over here through the Chrome Web Store. So here we are at the New tab. Whenever you open up a new tab in Chrome, you get the Chrome Web Store. Even if you don't have anything else installed, you get the Chrome Web Store. So go ahead and go into your Chrome Web Store and give that a click. And I want to point out to you this collection down here called Google Drive. So this is where you're going to find all those basically software programs that you're going to be able to attach to your Google Drive that are going to let you open other files. So now you know. Remember when this used to be called Docs? And this said Google Docs. And all you could do in here were create Google file types. Now you know why the name had to change. Because this is no longer just Google Docs. It's a whole lot more. It's really like an operating system. And we're now installing software and we're using it through the web. So in case the full impact of that hasn't hit you yet, that means you can go anywhere, you can log into your Google Drive account, and you can edit tons of different file types now without installing anything on your computer, and also without having an account on that computer. So if you have some really old computers at work, you can have people switching Google Drive accounts instead of logging off and logging back on, which can take forever, and you can have multiple people using those computers and this is how fast it is for me to switch accounts now. So now I'm in a totally different account. I have completely different documents, completely different applications. So much faster, really important for computer labs, right? So how you get these, this little task switcher up here, this little account switcher, is you go into your, your hot dogs up here. So the settings button now is these three lines, and you go into settings. And if you don't already have another account there, then you add a user down here. Once you've got more than one user, then you're going to get this switcher. If you're on a PC, I believe it'll be in the top left. Mine's in the top right. But this lets me switch accounts, switch sets of applications. So let's go ahead and install a Google Drive app. I'd like to start with PicMonkey for a bunch of different reasons. It's fun, um, and I do think it has some educational usefulness, although that's probably not what we're going to talk about today. So here's PicMonkey. And I'm going to now, I've already got it installed, so you'll install that, and you do that by clicking Add to Chrome. And once you get it installed, it's going to show up as one of your Google Drive applications. So I'm going to put a picture now into my Google Drive that we can work on and edit so you can see PicMonkey. So I've got a picture on my hard drive that I'm going to move over into Google Drive. So I'll just go to Upload File. And this is a nice close-up picture of Beyonce. I found out sometimes people don't like it if you you know mess up their real personal pictures, but I have a feeling she won't care. So um, I'm going to upload that picture and then we're going to open it with PicMonkey. Alright, so here we are. Here's my happy Beyonce picture and I've clicked it and now 
For some reason, I don't know why PicMonkey doesn't associate. See how this file is associated with, I think, LucidChart? And PicMonkey should be too, because I've chosen it to be the default for files it can open. But for some reason, it doesn't do that yet. Hopefully it will in the future. But that's okay, because you're going to know how to get around that. So I'm going to go to Open With, and I'm going to choose PicMonkey. All right, so here we are, and we've got our picture. I want to point out to you, I do, I love this app so much that I actually bought the extra effects. Um, see the ones that have the crown right down here. So if you don't, if you don't pay for it, then these will show a um, a mark, a watermark for a month. I think you can get them with the watermark, and then after that, all these other effects you can't use them. So let me just show you though. This is kind of like uh, Instagram so the kind of features that you're used to on Instagram and there's also standard editing stuff you know crop rotate all that kind of stuff there's some um, you know online plastic surgery here that's always nice but my favorite ones are right down here so I'm gonna go into the new category and we're gonna turn this lovely Beyonce picture into a zombie but don't worry she'll still be beautiful so let's choose a um, corpse eyes color for her. Um, I like this section better. Obviously, the ones you pay for are always better. So I'm gonna um, take these bloodshot, this bloodshot eye, and put it over her eye. I'm not gonna take a ton of time to do this because you'll get the impression for how this works. So for her other eye, let's take this. This looks like a zombie eye, doesn't it? So we'll put that on there. All right, you get you get how that works. You could make that perfect if you spent some time on that. Um, let's now let's mess up zom her beautiful skin with some zombie effects. So let's take a zombie bruise and you know, trust me, I've I've done this a, a hundred times and you can't make her look bad. There's doesn't matter how long you spend on this. Um, let's do some other effects here. Let's see, we will do some blood spills. Now let's do the gashes and slashes. So let's get a nasty boil and put it over there and some scratches. We'll turn those and put them on her forehead and um, maybe some pock marks over there. And then finally, I know you get the point, but you know, I can get carried away. Let's, let's do zombie virus over the surface of it or maybe radiation decay. So there we are. We now have a zombified Beyonce and we can save this and it's going to go back into our Google Drive and it is going to overwrite our original picture. So if you don't want to overwrite your picture then you want to save a copy of it first. But when we get back to our Google Drive over here, our happy Beyonce picture, now when we click this, let me refresh just to make sure it's updated, because now when we click this and let it open with Google Drive, it's actually going to be um, our changed picture. Now this is nice because we can share this picture right from here. So we could do anyone with the link can view, save, we get a web address for our picture or any file type. We can copy that, we can tweet it, we can send it to someone else, we can do whatever we want to do with that picture. So maybe that was too outside the box, especially for some of you techie guys you may be thinking how can that be used educationally? Well, it can be, especially if your students are working on projects or they're immersed in project-based learning. You really may need them to take a picture, edit that picture, and all that can be done online now without installing any software. But let's go for something a little bit more obvious. Let's install and open LucidChart. So LucidChart is a diagramming software. I think that if you remember Inspiration or Kidspiration, this is going to look familiar to you. And now this is, once we get it installed, this is how we can access it. So I can go right into Create Lucid Chart. And I just want to show you a couple of cool aspects of Lucid Chart to maybe get you excited about using it. So I'm just going to give it a name there. And now I have added more shapes. So if you go to Manage, uh, sorry, you go to more shapes down here you can turn on all the different shape categories so I'm gonna turn on iPad iPhone and mind mapping and save that and then over here on the left now I'll see those categories so you can see how I'm just scrolling down through there 
and I see all those different categories. Let's go ahead and pull out an iPad onto our screen. So here's an iPad. Oops, let me try that again. And I just pulled that over, dragged and dropped it, and I've got my screen kind of small here so that I can do this recording for you, but you, you can make yours much bigger. So now I can actually put things onto my iPad. So I can change the background color like that, and I can even, you know, make a chart right on top of this iPad using these other tools. So I want to make a flow chart. I can start building now my flow chart right on top of here. I actually used this the other day. Um, we're thinking about doing a kind of a four part model for school transformation, you know, four different strands of staff development types and types of classes students can teach. And I just pulled this down and then I was able to get um, text and label the four quadrants and, and make a whole graph. But I'm pretty sure that you've used tools like this before, so you know sort of how this works. You can build um, maps of things using this Lucid Chart tool. So that's probably obvious to everybody. Notice also there's a share setting right up here, just like other Google tools now. I want to show you at least one more. So the next tool I want to show you is a presentation tool, and it is called Slide Rocket. So you can see there are so many great ones in here, but this is Slide Rocket, and I'm going to add this one to my Chrome. So it's adding now to Google Drive. Oh, I already have it installed. And so let's go over to Google Drive, and I can create using Slide Rocket, or if I have any PPTX files in my Google Drive, maybe I've uploaded those or dragged and dropped them over in there, then I can open up that PPTX file and I can edit it using Slide Rocket. So let me find one and let's open it. So you remember how this works now. We're going to open up this Power PPTX here, PowerPoint. We're going to go to More, Open With, and Slide Rocket. So I get a prompt asking me if I want to import it as editable or import it as images. I'm going to import it as, el as editable. I want to see what it'll do. So let's click Next. So here's my presentation now, and I'm going to edit it using Slide Rocket. So you can see now I have my whole presentation. It looks pretty nice, I think. And I can even go in and change my text and type and edit. You can obviously see how many settings, how many options there are in this tool versus the Google presentation. Now, obviously, all of these options aren't always necessary because sometimes you just want a simple presentation. But if you're making something kind of fancy, then you might want to try out Slide Rocket. So far, we've talked about Google Drive apps, and you can see how many there are so many Google Drive apps. Um, you also will want to install Google Docs and Google Forms and all these Google tools into your Google Drive. Um, I hope I understood this correctly. It's something I just recently heard, but when I was at the, the Academy at the recent TCEA conference, one of the developers from Google was there and he said that installing, for example, Google Slides is what allows you to go offline with Google Slides. Let me show you what I mean by that. So when, when I go into my Google Drive and I go to More down here, I'm able to go to Offline Docs. If yours is not enabled, you'll get the opportunity to enable it there. But I believe what he said was, in order to actually use Docs Offline, you've got to have that installed from the Chrome Web Store. And those are actually all in the offline apps also, so that you can actually continue working when you're offline. Now, if I misunderstood, somebody please correct me in the comments. But I, I really believe that that's what he said. See, there's Docs and Google Drive. And that's what makes you able to edit offline. So. Um, there are also other kinds of apps that you can install. Let's take a look at the education section. So maybe, you know, maybe you're looking for a typing app and you can just choose Add to Chrome and that's not going to install into your Google Drive. That's going to install right here on your app's pages. Now notice if you haven't been back here in a while, you haven't looked at Google Chrome in a while, you might not realize that you can move these things around. 
So I'm trying to keep all my Google stuff together, but it's hard because almost everything I have is Google. But you can move these things around. You can move them from page to page if you want. So it's the only non-Google tool on this page. Let me take it and put it over here. And this is a way to access websites. So these are not necessarily things that you have to install, but it sure does make them easy to come and find. I do want to show you the Kindle Cloud Reader and its offline capabilities. A lot of school districts are talking about how are we going to do textbooks. We don't want to buy, you know, a Nook or a Kindle and an iPad or a Chromebook. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, if you use the Kindle Cloud Reader, you're going to be able to use this on any device. So if a student has a cell phone, they can use it there. So this is a book that I've downloaded. I think I got it free. I'm not positive, but anyway, um, if you haven't heard about this project, there's a, several different TED Talks on this topic, uh, The Hole in the Wall, really fascinating about how students learn without adults involved with just computer access. So um, if you're in a technology position and you hear teachers say, I just don't have time to teach technology, this is a great argument that kids who have never seen a computer before can actually learn to use it pretty much on their own. and uh, even teach themselves English. These the original studies were done in India. So this is a book from the Amazon store and this is downloaded into my Google Drive via the Kindle Reader. So let me go back to my library and we'll take a look at that. So these are some books that I've got downloaded from my Kindle library and how you download those you can go to cloud and two finger click or right click and choose download and now these books are available on my computer even when I'm not online. So it's a way to have textbooks regardless of whether you're at home or you're at school or wherever. Um, it's a pretty cool feature there and a really nice interface. So my hope is that I've shown you some things today that you maybe didn't know that you could do with Google Chrome or Google Drive and maybe shown you why it's important to have this available this browser you know quote unquote browser available in your schools because this is not like Internet Explorer you can tell people that you know they're not going to get rid of the internet just because they get rid of Internet Explorer. I've had some participants who were concerned about that. You know, I need the internet. We still have the internet. This is just another way to get to the internet, but it's so much more than that. So spread the word. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to tell you about Wii Video. So for you guys who have been interested in Animoto and other online video editing, you have got to check this out. I'm so excited about it. So Wii Video is kind of like Animoto, but it's so much more than even Animoto. You can put in pictures, you can put in video clips, and this again works through your Google Drive. So if you have a folder of video clips, pictures, all your materials you want, then you can meld those together through Wii Video and Google Drive right through the web. So you don't have to install anything on your computer. It's really amazing. So if you learned something, give me a shout out in those comments or on YouTube, and I appreciate you listening, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.